everyone welcome back it is time for another wrestling review we are back with slam anniversary this time slam anniversary was from yeah w windsor it was from windsor ontario canada windsor college so uh yeah it was um impact loves doing their uh shows here in canada we love having them here in canada and we get scott demore a lot so hey um caught the pre-show i guess uh the triple threat match jody threat it's, just, it's funny this is always the question i don't know i just watched it it was a women's six-man tag a women's six-man with jungle juice oh yeah jungle juice i saw that okay so you did watch that one that one was whatever what it was i really didn't care um, for that. um i mean i've seen worse yeah it wasn't a bad match it just was a whatever match i just didn't care yeah, for I, it. I don't Bruno know if St- i like this new character what a Courtney Rosemary. Rush, yeah. yeah. I like think we're first, gonna get. I kind of liked it. We're gonna get the character. I think we're gonna get a return to Rosemary. I think after a while, when Jungle Juice turns on her, I think they're gonna just keep losing and losing and losing, and it's she's gonna go crazy and it's gonna come back. I think so. I hope so. Um, but I mean, it wasn't like you said. It wasn't a bad match. Giselle Shaw is pretty good in the ring. She keeps improving. Um, we don't need more Jungle Juice. I mean, this was her best match I've seen. Yeah, because I think she was limited in the ring. Who else was on their team? Uh, Jody Threat, local girl from Toronto. Oh, Jody Threat. Yeah. And then we had, uh, it was it Giselle Shaw, Savannah, uh, Jay Vidal. Jay Vidal is the only one, the non, the only non-female member, I guess. I mean, he's one of her bitches, so. Yeah, that's true. But uh, yeah. But that then we go into uh, the second match on the pre-show, which was Kenny King beating Joe Henry. Uh, lots of issues with this. Um, I, I, Kenny King falls into that category of Moose, mm-hmm. uh, of like uh, Moose, Eddie, Eddie Edwards. Edwards. Like I just Brian I get Myers. it. You've been around. You have some sort of talent, but I don't care for you. And I don't understand the push at all when there's so many young guys that deserve a shot at the lowest title you have. I would have rather had Dirty Dango win this belt from him. Yeah, I would have rather had Joe Henry just keep the belt. Because now what do you do with him? Joe Henry's got nothing now. You got you have literally nothing. His storyline's over. He has no belt. Where does he go? He's not ready for the X Division. Your, your X Division's so crowded already. Yeah, and so deep. No, that's like... Just look yeah. at the match they had. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which uh, Kenny King wins this, and we'll go right into the the first match of the on the main show was the Ultimate X for the number one contendership for the X Division Championship. It was uh, what do we have? We had Kushida, we had Alan Angels, we had Jake something or returning Jake something, uh, Jonathan Gresham, Kevin Kevin Knight surprisingly, and Mike Bailey. I mean, you had five really good wrestlers, in my opinion. Five mm-hmm. really good wrestlers. I don't understand the inclusion of Jake something. Not that he's bad, but like... He did, he felt like he didn't belong. In comparison to the name value of all those other wrestlers, I mean, Kevin Knight is still young, but he's proved that he's good, yeah. right? I Why, think they threw in because he's from for? Detroit as well. Maybe. Um, but like, I have, a, I have a big issue with this match type. Like we okay. saw, like the X, half the X falls apart. What yeah. happens if the whole X falls? The match is over? Like we just say, screw it, and the match is over? And that's it. What it's if it over. happened at the beginning of the match? The pay-per-view loses an entire match with all these great wrestlers because you couldn't, you don't have Support. like a proper strategy to hold the, the X up? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it was a fun match with some innovative, like there was uh, there was that uh, the double Spanish fly that uh, Angels did. Like there was there a, was there was a, a couple a... really nice spots. Um, yeah. Alan mm-hmm. Angel spiked his head into the floor when he did that. Mm-hmm. Well, I got scared a little bit. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't necessarily claim botches in this match, but there was a lot of really awkward spots where, like, you could tell it didn't go exactly how they thought the they were going to do it. Because, like, Alan Angels did that Spanish fly, mm-hmm. and then had to climb up on the ropes to do something else. And yeah. you could see it. He was like, oh, shit, do I li- really have to do this right now? Yeah, he's a little dazed by it. Yeah. But, I mean, it was fun. I mean, uh, okay, the winner is Kushida goes on to win it. Um, Obviously, that's the right choice. It's the right choice in the sense that Kushida needs to do be doing something of value. But it's yeah. also, like, when I'm looking at this, like, 
what does Mike Bailey and Jonathan Gresham continue to do? What are yeah. we doing with Kevin Knight? I know he's still young, but like Alan Angels isn't getting younger. What's his spot here? Because yeah. she does like, yeah, he could just not ever win again, and he's still the greatest junior heavyweight of, all, of time. all time. Yeah. Um, but I get it, right? It's just the the ramifications for everyone else in the match is what I don't get. But see, that's the thing. This feels in a way. It, it feels like a step down for Kushida. Two, three months ago, he was going for the championship. It does, unless you use it to get him back to the main pitcher, the, the main title. But the problem with that is, well, no spoilers, but Nick Aldis is a yeah. guy that it's like very deserving of winning a championship. So it's like, kind of, what do you do here? Yeah, it's they're in a tight spot. And then what do you do with someone like Gresham, like you said, and Bailey, where the put they need a push. This is where that third title could have helped them but instead you stick it on kenny king exactly and i do think i think we're in the it's weird to say this because like i am a more belts guy we know this Mm -hmm. and but impact seems like the kind of place where more belts is not necessarily a good thing but now they're like overflowing in this mid card with nowhere to put anything because to me the the digital yeah. media championship is not a mid card title that's your lowest that's your TBS title. TNT title yeah that that's like a WWE doesn't even have one of those belts the North no. American championship I guess but because uh, they... I wouldn't put the NXT title that low but they need something in between now they need something like they either a... need to get something in between or they need a trios belt. Yeah. So that you can keep large groups of people in the picture at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I, I kind of like that idea. Or like you said, or a secondary title to really. They used to have it one time, but. Oh, well, we'll see. Maybe they'll bring in something back. But the, uh, legend, the wins, legend belt, whatever the it was le- called. Yeah, was it the legends? It, ha- it changed names four times. I saw like, it today. It was like, like legends. Something, the king something, of the mountain. King of the, it ended on king of the mountain. Yeah, and then they merged it when Jeff Derrick came with the GCW, Global, uh, GFW, Global Force Wrestling. But I mean, Kushida wins. Kushida will probably, um, when we get to it, that match that's going to happen will be amazing. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to be disappointed with that. I-, I think it's funny. I won't give any spoilers on my take of this pay-per-view, but mm-hmm. I think we're, we're going to be on opposite ends of this by the end. Okay. All right. Um, with that, we're going to go into the women's tag team match of Killer Kelly and Masha Slamovich against the coven of Taylor Wilde and Kylan King. Was there a sale on red hair dye? I don't know. I don't know. But I, this is one of my most anticipated matches of the year. Mm-hmm. Literally of the year. I genuinely think that Killer Kelly is one of the most underrated wrestlers in all of mm-hmm. wrestling. I Not think just that female. I, I, uh, period. And I think that Masha Slamovich is arguably the best female wrestler that is working today. So, okay. and then not to mention that Kylan King has a very bright future. And yeah, at this and point, Taylor Wilde is a Canadian legend. Yes. I was going to say she's well-established. Look out for that Canadian top wrestling women list coming soon. Coming soon. Eventually. Eventually. Eventually it'll come. But, um, but it still was a good match. It, it was disappointing. I will never call this bad. I, I enjoyed okay. it. I think it was a good match, but I expected the world of this for some reason. And when I didn't get it, it just kind of was like, uh, I kind of let, and it ends very abruptly. Yes. Um, it was a get short match. Last minute. Well, was, how long was it? Like six it was minutes? Like, it's nine. We get that little false finish at the end. And then uh, we get that distraction by Killer Kelly and Masha Slamovich ends up winning with the snowplow. So we got new women's tag team champions. And you know what? I'm glad. I I'm, I can't wait to see what they're going to do with it. Well, it's that's just... the thing. We finally got some gold on Masha in Impact. Both of them. I don't, I don't think that Killer Kelly's ever won a belt. Okay. She went from WWE, maybe before, but she went from WWE to impact and i don't think during that entire run she's ever won a belt no probably not so hey good on her too like i'm looking for i'm looking forward to more like i want more i want to see them yeah. like absolutely run rough shot in the entire women's division now i want i would there's there's like a few i would have loved to see chelsea green and diana perrazzo against them you know yeah but chelsea green's still under contract yeah, Not Chelsea like Green's in WWE in doing some kind of stupid character that she's at the bottom of the card. She's at the yeah. bottom of the card. 
And we haven't even seen Emma in a while, too. I'm so, I, I, and, and those are people that I, I praise their talents. Them and yeah. the uh, the other two girls. What were they called? The Iconics? Yeah. Like, um, But it, yet they keep bringing Charlotte back and putting her in the main event picture. See, this is what I'm saying. I approve of the Oscar and Rhea situation 100%, mm-hmm. but I'm yeah. worried that we're going to go right back to the norm. Right yeah. back to the norm. But that's 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 an episode for next week when that's we do our episode for another time. Yeah, that's when we do our state. But um, so we'll go into our next match. Um, so like I said, we're I'm I'm interested. So you you weren't a fan of this match as much as I was then. It, it wasn't not a fan like appreciation of what happened, like yeah. the work in the ring. But I think for setting this up to have these all these characters in one place at one time to to finally put over these two women is like 9 minutes i want i wanted like 20 a 20 minute match like did we not just watch bullet club gold versus ftr like yeah. you could do this these are four women that are very capable there's no there's no like loose nail in this team no. you know there's no loose screw in these four people they could put on an epic match why did i get a 9 minute like medium level match maybe they'll save that for the rematch it's possible it's possible but uh but yeah i mean we'll go into goonies the next never match. say die goonies never say die exactly um with the next match we're going with to the next it's uh Darren mccarty is the special guest enforcer it's bully ray and his new partner of deaner because burt macklin fbi got hurt and because so you replaced set- him with a worse guy, you know, it, I finally start coming around to Burt Macklin FBI. And now we got Diener, like get out of here. And Scott Demore and his replacement partner, because they set PCO on fire mm-hmm. is a returning Eric Young. You know, who what's was funny? killed by Diener six months ago. Technically. I don't mind Eric Young at all, but I do think he's very close to falling into this is the one of the only companies too. This might be the only company where me and you have an extensive list of people like no more. Stop having these people in the main picture and the, yeah. the main title card. But I don't really have that much of a problem with Eric Young, but he's really close to being in there close with to, like with yeah. like Diener and Eddie Edwards he and all those in the other companies come back to impact and will put you in a prominent role again. Yeah, and it's like it's weird. Like no and I think he did really well in this match. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, he did. And what's funny about Eric Young was he re-signed to WWE just this past November. Never been on TV, never backstage, and all of a sudden, he's in Impact again. So I guess they released him. They must have. Or they they must have released him. him Or they they must have released him a while ago, or they they said you don't have to worry about a no-complete clause. Yeah, it could be. It could just be like, we're not using you right now, so go do but um really surprised by scott demore in this match i mean scott demore is a real wrestler he is he fought yeah. the rock that's true he did that's right he did um he claims to be the inventor of the canadian destroyer well there you go I, he did it in the match so i mean he it's not like he can't go i'll be okay let's let's talk for real this match sucked yeah um, it wasn't a good match obviously not but it also was at least it was fun Entertaining, yeah. We get like, that little bit with Scott where, Demore's mom. Demore and McCarty like double choke slam. Bully uh, right through the table. Bully right through the table, but like he got like one inch off the ground. I'm surprised the table broke. Yeah, like because they're both so short, McCarty, and they couldn't even let him get him off the ground. He had to. He's you can see both of them. You could see at one point Bully Ray is making his way on top of the table as opposed to being brought to the table too. Yeah. Right. And that's another thing. Like McCarty got involved because the referee quit the match and McCarty put on the referee's jersey. Um, we get we get a one taken out con. So at least that takes out the outside interference part of the match. So essentially it was a four on three match. Mm-hmm. Also, I don't know if, if this is just me and I don't remember it properly, but do you not remember the last event in Windsor looked completely different? Different, no, that event was, I think, in London, not in Windsor. Okay, okay, because I felt like maybe they they filmed on the opposite side last time or something because it looked like the background was looked different to me. I was like, what the hell is this? It it was filmed at a university gymnasium, St. Clair College. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's a nice gymnasium as far as I know, but that didn't this didn't look like that gymnasium. It could have been the lighting, 
It could have been, but you know what? You might be right. It might have been the London University one that I thought it yeah. was. I just got them confused. Could be quite possibly. Um, but yeah, this match wasn't good. Um, but at least this feud is done. You there? We may have lost Campo, so I'll keep going. At least the feud is done. We're gonna move on. Um, so up next we get Nick Aldis. Nick Aldis, such a fantastic promo. Um. He's, what more can I say? All right. So with that out of the way, um, next we get this really good promo by Nick Aldis. Nick Aldis is such a good, good promo. Like he knows how to talk. It harkens back to those Ric Flair 80s WCW NWA type of promos. Yeah, he's also like a huge jerk. Yeah. And he just gets it. I, I, I don't know. Real life, but I, I really like the I really like his ability to cut promos. I think he's one. He is another one of the most underrated wrestlers that's working today. Yeah, yeah I think his, it's his, also due to the fact that he does. I think have a bad reputation. I mean, that's fine. I'm here for the wrestling. Yeah, if I don't you get to CM are. Punk levels, then it's another story. Yeah. Hey, CM Punk at least put over Ricky Starks. Hey, very happy about that. Couldn't be happier. Yes. Spoiler for. Uh collision and the owen hart tournament but uh tune in uh, next week in our state of wrestling when we talk about that um but that's a story for another day once again um up next we get uh a really strange matchup between leo rush and chris saban yeah and at this it point, worked for me it worked I, i'm gonna tell you something at this point not not this point when this match ends which we'll wait we'll talk about this for a bit but mm-hmm. I realized something was going to happen and I was already angry. Like I was already down a very weird hole at this point of being just upset with what everything happening. So, um, this match is good for whatever it was for whatever it was, but I also have to take away a lot of points because whatever it was, was clearly a ploy. Someone was injured or, something's going on right it's uh, so what happens is before the match leo rush does this move knocks chris saban out basically um the doctor says no chris saban can't continue but he says he wants to continue anyway a quick minute later leo rush is your new champion um i think saban is hurt i i think it has to be because it it's it's so this this sets us off somewhere else, but I'll, I'll wait till yeah. the very end to talk about this specific situation. But I find this odd. Leo Rush hasn't been wrestling in Impact almost at all. But he's contracted to New Japan, isn't he? I think he has a. I think he works for both. Okay. I think he has like a hybrid contract where whoever needs him uses him. Kind of like a Kushida kind of thing, kind of contract, yeah, basically, like Kevin Knight. Yeah. Um, but. I find it so odd because he hasn't been part of this company at all. And you just slapped the the title on him. Yeah. What about all those guys that just had a match? Those guys, Mike Bailey has been fighting for the stupid X division title for how long? Jonathan Gresham is like, he's been there a year now and he hasn't gotten a push yet either. They need to join the tag team division. I think Bailey and Gresham together. Yeah. Which is already you can see deep. they're they're clearly like quasi teammates at this point, right? Yeah, like they're unintentionally like together. I could I, I'd like to see that. Um, but Leo Rush winning this belt, I think he's going to be doing something for uh the multiverse show. I think that's this might have a bit to do with that. We do know one match that's announced for the multiverse show. Yeah, we do. Uh, we're not going to talk about that because no. that's for next week. But that's another show. But um, I mean, they couldn't pull the they didn't pull a, tr- a trigger with Leo Rush in New Japan for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. So if, this feels like a consolation prize to him here. Even though Very I odd. I am excited to see Kushida versus Rush. Yeah. Yeah. Not really. I mean, we saw it. Yeah. True. Uh, it, okay, it's 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 not a no, I don't want these things. It's a... Do we need them? Do we need them? Because is he just a transitional champion now? 
No, I don't you think so. I, I mean? think Rush is going to hold it for a while. So was Kushida going to waste his call out to just not win? I think so. It's odd. See, another odd decision. It was an odd choice to let him win, and it's an odd choice to let Leo Rush win, and now it's an odd choice to have Kushida get there just to lose to Leo to Rush. lose, yeah. I'm yeah. very like that. That's what I mean. That That's like where I am with this pay-per-view. It's very like, it bothered me. A lot of yeah. things that happened were just like, why? And this is what? This is already what? Our third championship match? Fourth? Whatever it is. And they've already third. And they've already changed three titles. So it was making me very, very nervous for the end. But wait, there's, there's more. more. Um, so quick match, like I said, Chris Saban is probably hurt. I think there was a bigger storyline involved with Chris Saban, and this was more of a panic move, I think. I a hundred percent agree, but I want to wait till we get there to get there. Yeah. Um, so with that out of the way, next we have subculture um with against ABC versus Brian Myers and Moose and Rich Swan and Sammy Callahan. We need to put these guys on the show, so let's put them here. But Sammy Callahan and Rich Swan, okay, fine. Why the hell is Moose here? And why the hell is Moose with what's his face? The most professional wrestler, what? Brian Miles. But it's like, what did Brian Myers do to be to deserve this? Like I a Moose thing I get because they keep pushing him. As much as I don't yeah. like it, I get it. What, what the hell did Moose, Brian Myers I think do? Moose has a has it in his contract to be on every pay per view, I think. That's Especially fine. That. But keep him in like the pre-show, yeah. fighting like Giselle or something. Actually, she's better than being on the pre-card. Then, yeah, I, I digress. This match, um, was, oh, uh, uh, not. I don't know how to say explain it. It was hit and miss. There was moments of this match that were excellent. When excellent, you had when you had subculture and ABC in the ring together, their mm-hmm. chemistry is phenomenal. It's fantastic. We I could have even even the, some spots with Callahan and and Swan. We didn't. You're right. We didn't need Moose and thing in this match. Yeah, because Callahan can fit in right, yeah. and uh, Rich Swan is a good wrestler. Yeah. Um, I would have rather had him win the digital media championship. Uh, but yeah, it's digressing from that point. Moose doesn't fit into this match at all, or the style. He's he he's too clunky to be the big man, and he's too not good enough to do the the little guy stuff. Yeah. And like I said, a match. This we talked about this match before. Just, we watched the pay per view and like we had big expectations for this. That's yeah. like a a lot of big name power, regardless yeah. if we like Moose or not. Um, and it wasn't a hundred percent a good match. Like it was fifty no. fifty. There was a lot of missed spots, like completely yeah. missed spots. Yeah, but like um, I said, subculture is really good. Yeah, and the spots with subculture and ABC were fantastic, but just them two. Nobody else yeah. really. I and then spoiler subculture wins the titles. Yeah, and which I'm I, fine with. I'm not okay. I'm not not fine with it, but it makes no sense to me. These guys were riding high, dominant as all hell, and you did this on a cop out situation, and you you gave it to subculture. Yeah, they just came through the doors of the company. Yeah, but then again, Mark Andrews, he's been with the company before. Fair, fair. But you know what I mean? It's like another Leo Rush situation. Like, is somebody injured that we don't know about? Is this like a, a like, or are what there... if the, what if their contracts are up? That's possible. Maybe they're going to Japan or something. Right, their contracts could be up, and we never know. Like, what if they're like my? What if their contracts are up and they're going to be joining BCG? That's very possible. I mean, it's it's that's an awkward one too because. Austin, uh, I was gonna call him Austin Aries. Ace Austin. Ace Austin is dating Gia Miller, right? And yeah. she's probably never leaving Impact. So, like, I feel like he might not want to immediately go. So we may see a split. If I don't even Chris... know, I don't even know for contracts, right? We don't even know. Yeah. So we're not gonna let's not speculate that. Yeah. Let's but not speculate. Um, not a, but not a. Bad what's his name? They did. All. What's their names got involved in this match though? Didn't they? The Rascals. Yes, the Rascals came in and interfered, but then Subculture used it to get some 
to capitalize on Callahan. Sw- Callahan. Yeah. And Swan, yeah. So it's kind of weird because the Rascals interference didn't really s- help subculture yeah. win. It just stopped the Ace and Bay from winning. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I mean, this this probably is going to – but then again, why would you – like, if so, if Ace and Bay are setting up a feud with the Rascals, wouldn't you want them to keep the belts so you could fight them for the belts? Or do you yes. think – or do you think they think they have a better chance at beating subculture than they would at beating ABC? I just think maybe there's plans to do something else with them. Like, let's say it's not contract related. I think maybe they're planning something else. Okay. Maybe they want a break. Yeah. Put, I, I mean, I trust the impact booking. Like, I mean, they've been pretty good lately and until whatever the hell they're planning for the future right now i'm very worried but we said that a couple months too and then look what it gave us but it put us on a really good path where right now i don't see that path yeah right like it it set us up for so many options where we were so excited about all these options and now all of these options didn't follow through and now where are we yeah you know what i mean yeah yeah um, so like I said, spoiler, we get well, not spoiler. That's the whole purpose of the show, but, uh, subculture, your new tag champs. I think they meet, they are going to be entering a feud with both the, uh, the ABC and rascals. There's going to be little... a three-way match. I think. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. So, um, with that, we're going to a show that's why was this on the card? Eddie Edwards against Frankie Kazarian. Uh, can we just skip this? Like, yeah. This was not a good match. No. It it was a very, very average TV match. And it was very subpar for Frankie Kazarian. Yeah. It was a lot of interference-based. It was basically mm-hmm. a showcase for their two wives. Mm-hmm. And, and this is... Eddie and... Edwards' wife, if I can forget her name, but it's like show Alicia? to show. It's like how much clothes can we remove off her body is like Alicia? what it seems like their goal is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I really don't care for like I said this match, and this was the longest bloody match on the card. Made no sense. Yeah, and it, Eddie Edwards, like you said, is another one. I put it in my notes too that these two are guys that should be in matches that are putting people over. Eddie Edwards should be in a match with say like a Jonathan Gresham putting it over, putting him over. Kazari needs to be putting younger talent over. We don't want forty something year old guys fighting each other with no stakes. Yeah, that's that's completely fair. And especially because you gave us this awkward situation, and now I'll get rid of this as fast as I can, where Frankie Kazarian came in, won mm-hmm. the X Division title, gave it up for his shot, then yeah. didn't get a shot really, and is now in the mid card. So why did you push him out of the gate with all of this momentum just mm-hmm. to shut him down? Yeah, it makes no sense. It doesn't. Right, you so- see, like, I'm not going to ever sit here and pretend impact is garbage or they don't know what they're doing with the booking but right now i'm at a loss of like yeah. what are you doing yeah i i agree um let's we can glaze over this match because yeah, we can glaze point. over this and get to the next match so i can freaking smash my computer on the floor uh we get trinity versus diana perrazzo for the uh for the impact knockouts championship immediately spoilers trinity wins the title mm-hmm. we knew that was coming why I don't know. I think that was contractually obligated for her. Your most loyal, best, probably best female wrestler you maybe ever have had. Sorry, Gail Kim, you're definitely up there. Don't get me wrong. You're probably number one. List of but Canadian women coming soon. It's it's just crazy to me. This yeah. is insane. Like, I get the Burt Macklin situation. Yeah. Steve Macklin. I get it. But yeah. I don't get this. At least you could have turned it into a feud. You yeah. immediately let her win the title? Yeah, and they're still friends after this. Like, in, Unless the, the plan is that we're immediately going to have... Some, and it's not because Killer Kelly and Masha are tied up now. Mm-hmm. Unless Deanna's going to win this title back right away and there's going to be a third match, I, I don't see the logic of this. It, it feels unearned. Yeah. And no, don't get me wrong. I've watched here and there my fair share of impact in between the pay-per-views lately, just yeah. out of boredom. And Trinity's been fine. 
Yeah. This match, she was a heavy duty botch fest. Yeah. She was trying to do too many. The way she won that match with that awkward, whatever that was, submission. What was that? She also did a move just before it, uh, and it was like she missed the whole thing. I honestly think Perazzo tapped out just so Trinity wouldn't legit hurt her. It's possible because it was a really e. They were even saying it, like, "Oh, look at this innovative, a different and this, mm-hmm. and this sets us off for the most awkward main event ever, where everyone was just covered in glitter." Yeah, absolutely. To see Alex Shelley sparkling in the light. Very odd. Um, yeah, not a this match. But that's I, the thing. I, like, where does where does it go? Like you said, where does it go? What's next for Perazzo? What's next for Trinity? Are we gonna get yeah. a Monet match? You you had a skyrocketed Perazzo, then you had her running the mid card, then she made a huge comeback to win the title, and now she's just Deanna Perazzo again. Attorney at law. Is, are they gonna like? Are they gonna go Trinity Grace? Like Jordan Grace? I don't I don't know if Jordan Grace is gonna come back yet, but you can't this is the thing. You you can't put Trinity against Grace and have her beat Grace. No. It it takes away all of Grace's momentum making a comeback after how dominant she was. Jordan yeah. Jordan Grace beat Masha Masha Slamovich like three, three times. times. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, what if it's someone like a like a uh a Taylor Wilde against Trinity? You could do it, but it, you're somebody touch different. It. That's a squash. Yeah, you don't think they'll put Taylor it on. Wild is there in Natalia? Okay, like she's a good wrestler; she can go, but she's there for a purpose to groom the younger talent. Clearly, yeah. and and Kylan is going to be great. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it, like you said, it makes it makes no sense. But uh, so Trinity is your new. Impact Women's Champion. Now that is five belts all changed hands on the show. So with that, uh, we're going to go into our main event match is Alex Shelley versus Nick Aldis. In a glitter this, bomb in the match. Glitter, in a glitter bomb match, yeah. Um, To me, this was the best match on the card. This was definitely the best match on the card. This match was great. Yeah. Um, It was very absent of mistakes. Mm-hmm. It was straightforward. They were, it was smooth. So they were extremely, like, these this is professional wrestling at its at least by for, two professionals. Yeah, exactly. Veterans that know what they're doing, they know how to handle themselves in the ring, even with all the silly silly little shenanigans with the belt in the ring and the low blows and all that, it still worked for them. And it, it worked. It was pro- I liked how it worked. Mm-hmm. Where when t- the ref was like, all right, you keep bringing the belt in, trying to hit him. I'm going to let him use it. And he gives yeah. a DDT or whatever. It was. Well, I don't yeah. remember what the, move it the was. The cradle shock DDT on the, yeah. On, on the belt. And the on the belt. Like, oh, I'm letting it go. But the thing is, Nick kicked out. He mm-hmm. kicked out at that. So uh, it's, uh, it, it was a good, just an overall really smooth not technical wrestling in the sense of what we think is technical wrestling, but like yeah. from an on a piece of paper, but the most technical way you could wrestle a match by the numbers. Yeah. This was a very, by the was, numbers. and yeah. it was, it was very well done. It was smooth. It works. Yeah. Like, especially when you came because out, because if like you need to go technical, stuff. all this and Shelly can go technical. All this can use power. All this can use submission. Whereas Shelly, you use see the... I, all this was coming off the top of the ropes. Like I was like, what is this? He's yeah. a big man. Yeah, he is. He's not a small dude. But yeah, this was this was the best match of the night. We get a couple near falls, but we do get the right. I don't know if it is. We get Shelly winning. Uh, this is why I don't know if it's right. But maybe it is. Because you're giving Alex Shelly some more time mm-hmm. before Nick Aldis wins the title. Because Fair. Nick Aldis called him a transitional champion a lot. Do you feel like now they have to, they're forced to keep the belt on Alex Shelley all the way until Chris Saban comes back to execute that story. Or do you think they're going to throw that whole story in the garbage? That's what I was talking about with by him. That I, the title. Depending on how long Alex Shelley is out for, or sorry, Chris Saban is out for. If he's out for a couple months, they can do that at Bound for Glory. Because I was seeing like maybe 
he beats all this and then the title changes to Saban or whatever. They have the match where Shelly wins yeah. and then all this gets it. But now you're in a place where it's like, how long can you keep all this losing? And you know what I mean? To- and on top of that, after the match, we get a returning Josh Alexander. Oh yeah, Josh Alexander. I completely forgot about that. We get a returning Josh Alexander and he never lost that belt. So he wants what's his. And I program with him and Nick Aldis would be wonderful. Have him have Nick Aldis win. I'm already on board. Have Nick Aldis win. Mm-hmm. Let, let Alex Shelley keep it for a bit. Yeah. Have Nick Aldis win and then have like a trio match, four matches, whatever you want to do with Alexander, where the first two or three matches, Aldis cheats every time to keep the title. Okay. And then so Alexander we have overcomes. a number one contenders match between Aldis and Josh Alexander at Bound for Glory. Have, Aldis, have che- Aldis, Aldis cheats, cheats to, win. to win and beats Alexander. And now you set up a, a feud between them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. I, I like that. So this sets up a feud. So when Aldis does win the belt down the road, we get the Aldis versus uh, Josh Alexander. I'll take it. Maybe mm-hmm. you have like in the meantime to give Alex Shelley someone to wrestle. You push it all the way. Let Leo Rush cash in the, his Dex division title yeah. to face him just to lose. And that way it opens up that division again for Kushida to face someone or you give the belt back to Saban when he comes back. And you give Saban that record of the most wins uh, ever for the X Division champion. That's why I keep this guy around. See? I mean, there's so many ways to book it, but this is the only division that can be booked because every other division is all over the place right now. I agree. Yeah, but I like your idea of putting Bailey and Gresham together, have them part of that tag division. Especially because now, I didn't want to say it at the time, but now that the tag team titles are not in on ABC anymore, yeah. I think there's more room to just flop it back and forth. A, bunch a little of bit of hot pot, uh, hot shotting hot, it a bit. Yeah. So I agree, I agree. Um, Not Impact's strongest show. No, I think I, I downplayed it a bit. Yeah, as my my personal coming into this, I had high expectations with the storylines, and it mm-hmm. did not pay off. And it also set us on a path for even worse storylines, at least in my opinion. And the wrestling was just, it was base level good, but yeah. there was nothing that like exceeded my expectations, minus the main event and like here and there parts. Uh, yeah. For me, it's a seven. Yeah, I I went slightly higher. I went a seven point one. So, I'm, I'm su- honestly like I- I'm surprised you stuck with me on that. I felt thought for sure no, after watching I, it, it was your type of kind of show, though. You know, yes, like the, the but, way they played it out. Like we say, though, the way they booked it, the way what they're setting up, the matches were fine, but they weren't like if the matches were amazing and there was no even if there was no future. Kind of like what Putty says, how he speculates for the future, right? to throw his name out there a bit. Like he always talks about what's next and what's next and what's next. Well, what's next other than the main event picture, there's nothing I'm excited and for. Wrestling right? doesn't stop. So you, it's not like a movie where you have time to like fix, figure it out. Wrestling yeah. doesn't stop. So you got to start going into stories right away now. Yeah. And other than the main event picture, you got nothing. Like, yes, we're going to get Kushida versus Leo rush. We're going to get, you know, Maybe, maybe Rush goes on a tear and, you know, maybe this is where Bailey beats him. Or and you know what's a really where... weird one for me? How fast, like ridiculously fast they U-turn Trey Miguel out of the X Division. Yeah. Like, what, what was that about? He was like a great champion that was dominating the division. He lo- As soon as he lost the title, he immediately just left. He's going on to something yeah, else. Because his buddy's back. I guess, yeah. So at least there's at least there's something he got his friend back so they can go for something different. You know what I mean? I dominated the tag division. He goes, I've, you know, for Trey Miguel, it's like he dominated X division. I'm going to go dominate the tag division. But I just find it like you should have at least rechallenged to get your title back one or two times. Yeah. Yeah. Like, are you not still the number one contender? You just lost the belt. Technically, yes. But it's they did they did there. they did mention something. Um emergence here in Toronto. Sonata's yeah. coming back. Yeah. But emergence is not a pay-per-view, right? That's one of those event things. Yeah, that's one of those, I think, TV special events. But uh 
What's I the mean, next ex- actual pay per view? They talked about it. Oh, it's multiverse, right? Yeah, that's their next pay per view, and I think their next big show is uh, is Bound for Glory in October, or is it? Uh, yeah, because they got Victory Road in August, which is one of those TV specials. Mm-hmm. Emergence is another one of those TV specials, and then it's Bound for Glory in October. So. I'm really surprised you gave it a seven one. I thought you would go way higher. I guess I was no. wrong. No, no, this was uh, like you said, it was not not the greatest of uh pay per views, but it served its purpose. But like I said, where's there's no storytelling for the future? Yeah, they they shot themselves in the foot here. Yeah, so with that out of the way, guys, thanks again for joining us. Um, tune in next week. We have our annual G1 recap, weekly recap. Um, I sent Campo a screenshot already. I've already started the spreadsheet with the standings. That's all ready to go. Um, as of this recording, two nights have already passed. Night three, I think, is Tuesday. So it's going to be a long three weeks. Yeah, it'll and be good. It will be. And I, and I realize why they did this the way they did is because of the fact that this year there's more participants in the G1. There's four more participants than last year. Uh, so, yeah. Because last year there were four groups of seven. This year we got four groups of eight. And it's in a shorter time frame this year. But this year we're not having pre-match. No, that's it's why it's in, a, it's, in a, it's in a shorter time frame this year. So I think that's why. I think that's why they're doing no filler matches are just going straight you know night one was block a matches night two is block b matches you know what i mean like i'm block... okay with that decision as long as there's yeah. space out. To... Oh, it can't be day 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 one day off day like it needs to be like two days then one day off then two days and one day off i think like, which I is what they're doing to watch it they're, yeah. three, they're over three hours yeah they are so but that's what lunch breaks are for yeah i wish i could do that on my lunch break i don't have that kind of data Anyway, with that out of the way, guys, tune in next week. We'll have our G1 review. We'll probably have a state coming out for you next week as well. So with that out of the way, thanks again for joining us. Let us know your thoughts on Slammiversary, Impact's second biggest show of the year, up behind Bound for Glory. Let us know in the comments below. If you're not subscribed, please go ahead for more content like this. And in the words of Kenny Omega, goodbye and good night. (laughs) 